Hi all, uh, nice to see you, to hear you, happy to be uh, here with, uh, uh, with you. Uh, I'm not a new member for Web UI engineering community. I already uh, had possibility to talk, uh, to uh, like conduct one talk regarding accessibility. So uh, it's not new experience for me. And uh, before we start, I would like to ask you one uh, simple question. Uh, it's like a questionnaire. Could you please uh, write in Zoom chat from one to 10, what is your mood right now? How do you feel like from one to 10? Mm -hmm. Great, great. So mostly I see above uh, six or seven, so n n nice to see it. Yeah, great. Uh, so I hope that uh, um, during this talk, uh, th th this amount will be just bigger. I hope so. Yeah, and usually before I start my talk, uh, I'm trying to answer two questions. Uh, first one is why this topic? And second one, why this speaker? Let's start with why this topic. Uh, so why code review best practices? So. Uh, I believe there is no need to sell you idea and the importance of code review. You uh, probably understand it. Uh, what I learned during my uh, career and uh, experience as a, a former software engineer uh, that uh, uh, this seems like code review best practices, so um, it's hard to find really cool and useful best practices because, okay, we know some tips, we know some ideas, etc. And even during uh, preparation to this talk, and you can do it uh, after this uh, talk uh, on your own, uh, just Google like code review best practices. So just Google and take a look at some articles, some videos, and probably you won't see a really useful tips. So uh, you uh, mostly you will see obvious things for you, but uh, there is not so much uh, like cool uh, ideas from the, I would say, practical side. So uh, the idea behind this, and uh, during my uh, couple of uh, last uh, projects when I was technical lead, I understand that probably I need to combine uh, all um, my experience regarding code review and to share it with Sorcerer. And uh, I hope that it will be useful for you. So it's regarding uh, why this topic, uh, regarding why the speaker. So a quick uh, introduction about me. So again, my name is Alexander. Uh, basically, I have more than six ye years uh, experience in uh, production. Also, I have a couple of years in non-production, but uh, I, see, I think that it's does not count. Uh, uh, in generally, I have more than 10 years, to be honest, it's close to 15 years in uh, software engineering. If you can uh, count uh, first uh, labs in college and university, uh, which were written uh, using Pascal or C++ or Delphi, Assembler, etc., etc. Yeah, and uh, during this career, I had uh, Mm. Uh, I would say a lot of co co code review processes. I created a lot of uh, pull requests and reviewed uh, a lot of pull requests. Uh, so uh, mm. this is like about me. Uh, also, right now, my role is technical project manager. I'm working in Atlassian unit. Maybe some of you from this unit, maybe some of you heard about this. Uh, and uh, right now, I'm working on project where we are working with accessibility. And again, if you are interested in accessibility, you can uh, saw my uh, or see my previous talk for web UI engineering community. Uh, and the interesting aspect and the fact uh, that on current project, I was in the role of software engineer, technical lead, and right now technical project manager. So basically, I uh, saw a project and see from different aspects. And uh, uh, also, I'm a co-founder of uh, 
Ali Community for Software. Ali is short form for AL11Y for accessibility. Uh, why I uh, like founded it, uh, like co-founded it? Because uh, during working with uh, accessibility, it's more than two years uh, right now. I realized that as a former front-end engineer, I realized that accessibility is really a game changer. And maybe some of you even uh, faced with this. And and uh, uh, before uh, this, there is no place where you can discuss it. And right now, uh, if you faced uh, with some uh, uh, questions or any issues related to accessibility, you can just find this uh, channel in Teams and ask any of your questions. There are some uh, project managers, uh, technical leads, developers, designers, QC, etc., who works with it. And also, I'm a trainer in SoftServe, uh, and right now I have one uh, training. It's uh, called uh, Kaizen Planning. I didn't invent it. I just uh, take some approach. How, how can I improve uh, my uh, learning abilities? And uh, if, with this training, I'm trying to share not to teach you how to do it, but just to share how I do it, and maybe it will be useful for you. And uh, kind of uh, thing which relate to this is that uh, I'm working in SoftServe for more than three years. And when I uh, firstly became to this company, I was just middle software engineer. So only for three years, I had three promotions. So probably uh, it, this is uh, saying that I know something in learning. And if you are interested in just, uh, you can please go to the cornerstone, you can find this training and uh, we can uh, meet there and discuss how to do it. So uh, before we start, short disclaimer that because uh, again, as a former software engineer, I know the code review, it's really a sensitive topic. That is why I uh, want to say that uh, here I'm not for uh, teaching you something or saying that you need to do this and this. No, I just uh, want to share with you my experience and my opinion. Basically, it's uh, all my uh, mistakes, which I did as developer technical lead uh, so what relates to code review basically and uh, how i deal with them and what lessons learned i understand from the processes and practical aspects so you can't uh, you can agree with something you can disagree and it's okay yeah and uh, Again, what I would like to uh, discuss uh, or ask you, could you please write in Zoom, what are your expectations from this topic? So what you would like to hear or uh, you thought that, uh, oh, I, I would like to know about this and this. So could you please write your expectations from this topic? If you have any, if not, it's okay. Okay. Nice AVA flatline, by the way. <laughs> uh, example, how to do review experts. Just listen to your experience. Main okay, okay. Sense, sense. And uh, thanks uh, for your feedback. And another quick question, uh, maybe you know or heard any uh, code review best practices already and uh, wanted to share. Could you please write? Let's I do this to split. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you know some, some and would like to uh, share it across uh, other engineers right now. Number of reviews. Okay. Example how expressed. Uh -huh. It's uh, for the previous question. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, if you know, feel free to <laughs> know how you are. Uh, good, good best practice. Uh, yes, depending on the project goal, speed size. Okay. Yeah. 
and uh, yeah, I, I forgot to say that uh, today talk will be, uh, I, I hope that it will be useful for those who create pull requests and for those who reviewed pull, pull requests. So there will be a couple like from different uh, perspectives. So thanks. And if you have any questions, please uh, postpone it until the end of the talk, because probably I will answer on your question during the talk. And um, at the end will be a Q&A session where we can discuss it more uh, deeply. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, also, the right is a priority for review. So let's uh, thank you. Thank you for feedback. Let's start. I, uh, again, uh, while preparing, I have decided that better to make it simple. So I just prepared for you 10 tips and some lessons learned. And uh, let's discuss them. So first one, it's uh, work with board from right to left. And uh, here I prepared you a small demo and what I would like to uh, show you. Uh, so can you see the board? Uh, I mean, with uh, like diagram. Can you see diagram? Yes. yes. Uh -huh, great sense. Yeah, so imagine that we have some board and usually when you work with uh, tickets, you have some board with columns like to do, in progress, in review, in QA, done, etc. And imagine that we have two uh, engineers. For example, first one will be uh, Batman. And another one will be oh, Robin. So we have two engineers who uh, have initial state the same. So they have like four tickets to implement. And basically we start to work with it. Like uh, first day it will be like some selected. So, okay, we started and working with it. Uh, so it became like this. And then this, uh, then on next day uh, or uh, after a couple of days, it will be something like this. And then probably something like this. Yes. And then uh, it might go to, to this approach. Yeah. And what the interesting aspect I have noticed as a, a technical lead, what is the problem? That usually engineers, especially juniors, does not know how to work with board how to prioritize their work and basically how to start their day. And here I would like to share it with you, this tip, that uh, it is a good uh, um, best practice to start working with board from right to left. So basically, why? Why from right to left? Because the, um, the more uh, column uh, columns to right, so like priority goes from here to here because uh, for tickets which is in, in QA, you need to do only, uh, generally speaking, one step to make it done. And for ticket uh, which is in progress, you need to do four steps to make it done. So back is basically it's slow, uh, longer. So that is why uh, you at this moment imagine that uh, Batman will start uh, like day not with this because usually what, what does juniors do? Like uh, after some days, like on fifth or sixth day they just like continue working with this ticket so they are not looking to this column they are not and usually we also have like blocked column they're not looking to this but there they have some tickets for example in review so imagine uh, this situation so we have like here two tickets in, in review and here and uh, at some moment what does batman do he checked these tickets he fixed comments and do this and then continue working with in progress. But uh, Robin will continue working with in progress. He like, uh, I have to pull requests why I need to review them or why I need to fix comments for them. I will continue work with this ticket. After a couple of days, it's like longer, longer. And what we situation we have? We will have like this situation. So we understand that uh, the delivery uh, in this way will be faster than in this way. So uh, that is why I would like to uh, to say and to repeat that it's better to start working with right to left. And what I what I trying to say is that uh, basically what I learned and I believe in this that no one cares about your efforts. Everyone only cares about your results. So uh, and uh, it's really uh, 
relates to code review because I often, I really often saw situations uh, like when I, but uh, I, uh, let's return to not this one, uh -huh, this one. Yeah, I often remember the situations like I spent one sprint to this ticket. I created so many, I, uh, I have written so many code, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so, uh, so I do, I do, I do, but it's not a result. So uh, your customer uh, and usually project managers are uh, only cares about the results. And here, what? Why is the problem? Because uh, I understand it and uh, call it to myself that we have, uh, like usually we have developer mindset and engineer uh, engineer mindset. Developer mindset, it's like when. Uh, in, developer thinks that he paid for how many uh i'm in like in joke joking speaking that how many kilograms of code he or she have written but uh, uh basically it's like developer mindset engineer mindset it's uh, how many problems uh, i have solved and uh, usually on board tickets represent this problem so you should uh, keep in uh, uh, in mind and remember that uh, you are responsible as an engineer for whole process so basically how to make ticket from to do to done because uh, usually i faced with situations like uh, developers think that when they create pull request their work is done and they can take another ticket move it to in progress so like they like only this process like only writing code but it's not correct mindset correct mindset would be it's to remember about the whole process and to be responsible for the whole process okay so i believe everything is clear with this item let's go further uh the next one is clarify requirements it's interesting uh and uh, to be honest i would like to tell you a little bit story about this one why clarifying required uh, clarifying requirements it's important and how it relates to code review uh because at some moment i remember three years ago when i uh, was working on some project it was not at license unit uh i had a task like uh, create some huge component like really huge component and i was working on it like a, a one sprint or two sprint i don't remember re really long and when i created my pull request my technical lead i remember like it was yesterday he thought like alex we need to talk uh, like thomas what he was from czech republic and he thought like yeah you just need uh, you just needed to take those component and to rewrite it and that's it you there is no need to like create it from scratch like uh, and i like whoa <laughs> it's it's changing everything and i understand i understand that i uh uh, try uh, try to dive uh, in wrong direction. So that is why it's really important before even write uh, code. Uh, uh, please uh, check. Uh, uh, just a second. Please clarify requirements and only then start writing code because you will avoid a lot of problems. Uh, uh, basically uh, there will be no problems which you will have uh, during the code review uh, okay another one it's uh, interesting it's use critical thinking uh, what i mean by this uh, let me share uh, the next slide so basically you see some code uh, for example some uh, someone created for you pull request and you a reviewer for this pull request and you what usually you do you check only the new added code uh, mostly and not uh, like always but mostly again i'm talking about my experience uh, i faced with when engineers usually checked only and i also did it uh, only new code but what's the, what is the problem with this that and uh, for example in this code you probably will check only green code because it is new and if it's correct you like provided approve and uh, um, what i'm learned again from one of my uh, team leads that you always uh, not all like you should also take into account the code which you uh, which is already merged to master and uh, you might think that why 
Why? Because uh, it is already merged to master. So it's already passed code review. So probably uh, it's correct. So there is no need uh, even focus on this code because it should be correct. Uh, and it's a misconception uh, or misunderstanding uh, because we all human beings and we do mistakes and probably uh, this code which we merged before to master uh, could uh, have some mistakes so you should remember and this is my tip what i would like to suggest to you that and what i learned again from my experience that not you should use critical thinking not check only green code but also of the old one because uh, there could be some mistakes how to fix them uh, we will discuss it uh, soon yeah this is my tip number three uh, so let's just a second i will take a look at the comment section uh, okay okay mm -hmm. Uh, sense. So let's carry on. Uh, the next one uh, tip is follow ticket description. Uh, what do I mean by this? Uh, again, let's uh, return to the example with this code. Mm, you have some code. So uh, you have, for example, uh, create you want to create some feature and this feature some uh, has some exceptional uh, uh, acceptance criteria like uh, a b and c and uh, usually <laughs> and again it's uh, about practical aspects because it's like how in uh, internet or books and how it's in real life and in real life uh, you have ticket it's about a b and c but when you open pull request it's about a b c e d e f and something else why because uh, usually uh, sometimes engineers uh, really uh, like overplaying with boy scout principle and trying to do really best uh, and uh, what is the problem with this because after some time uh, imagine that uh, like uh, past one month or two months and uh, some uh, issue was found in this or uh, some Re really like hard issue in production and it relates to this pull request and you need to like understand what is going on you open a ticket this uh, you read description it's about a b and c but in pull request you see a lot of changes and uh, so it's hard to map it and to compare so what i would recommend is try to follow ticket description and uh, mostly again it's for juniors and middle levels because seniors uh, less have these problems uh, so if you want to improve it so what i would recommend if you want to make a small change which is not related to ticket description please do it in separate commit if you want to do a huge changes like really uh, like huge refactoring better to do it even in separate ticket uh, and it would be great if in your backlog uh, or in your jira would be tickets with types like technical improvements or just improvement etc uh, and then uh, it's better and again why because uh, yeah because uh, at some point uh, and what I, because again uh, folks i learned it on my own mistakes because what what i did i also was this guy who <laughs> uh, overplaying with boy scout principle and wanted to make it better and better and better but then i realized that again my ticket about a b and c and that's it it's like uh, for example three three story points it's work for for example four or five days and that's it by i uh, but i uh, working and working uh, have been working on it like one sprint two sprints three sprints and technically it come to, came to me and asked why it's so long what are you are doing and i like because i'm fixing this and this and this like i need to fix this service and this service and he like open the script uh, ticket description and ask me like but there is you don't need it it's like you, just your idea you wanted to do and i like uh, yes and um uh, and then i failed deadline so uh, due to these uh, changes so please try to follow ticket description and uh, believe me you will avoid a lot of problems uh, and if you want to make them please uh, better to make them in separate commit or in separate uh, ticket uh, 
I have a question regarding this code. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> yeah, I just wondering why it's so overcomplicated. So the complexity of this code is really big. I think it's more than 10, maybe 15. So I think it should be totally re rewritten. <laughs> so we should split it in, into like smaller parts. So I just wondering what is the final version of uh, this code? Uh, no, no, no. I just, uh, I just took the. Uh, this is. It's not my code. <laughs> yeah, I just took it as example. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, like, there's no need to like to make it better or etc. I just wanted to highlight the scene regarding uh, what and where and how to improve. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah. Le sense. Let's let's go on. Uh, the next tip it's about use feature branches as target. And uh, could you please tell in Zoom chat if you faced with such cases when you need to create a huge feature, which is uh, like depends from some parts, like part one, two, and three. By uh, they um, depends of on each other, and you need to do it in parallel. And uh, have you faced with such cases? Could you please type in Zoom like plus or minus every time? <laughs> uh -huh, okay, yeah. And probably you have some ideas uh, how to make it better. And here I would like to provide you with a tip how uh, I usually do it. And pro for, like for me, uh, at some point, I, I even uh, won't tell you uh, like, didn't want really to tell you about this because for me it's so obvious but again i learned from the other engineers that for, this is obvious for me not for all uh, that is why i would like to uh, show it to you what i mean by this so usually what the situation you have it's for example you have a master branch and then you have uh, created some branch like feature which is uh, which was created from master and uh, then you have this branch which was created from this branch and then you could have like this branch feature uh, 33 which was created from this branch and when what problem you will have during code review when you create like three developers created three features uh, in parallel but they uh, depends on each other and at some moment they like created three pull requests what the problem will be uh, with code review uh, those pull requests because this pr will have changes not only from this branch but also from this branch and this pr will have changes from all these branches and to review it from my perspective and from my experience, it's a mess. It's a complete mess because I need to compare to understand what and where should uh, uh, create it, etc. I know a couple of ways how usually uh, engineers deal with it. Uh, how I usually do with it. I just uh, ask uh, my teammates to do next. It's not great like, yes, for the first branch because it was created uh, from master, create pull request to master. But for, the, for this branch, create pull request not to master, but to this branch. And here do the same. And what it will give us that we, in this case, won't have the situation uh, when uh, we have the same changes in each pull request. So in this case, we have we will have unique uh, changes in uh, each of these pull requests and to review them will be much easier. But you can say counter argument that uh, in this case, uh, we won't have possibility to merge uh, such pull requests. Yes. So usually what I do is provide short description or if you work with Bitbucket, I'm not sure that GitHub has such feature that you can create tasks. In Bitbucket, you create just tasks and uh, when all these tasks will be completed, you can uh, you will be uh, able to merge the pull requests. So it works the same way. So you better to create just tasks and uh, uh, like. Uh, uh we should wait for example what i usually do i create like for, for this pull request i usually create tasks that we should wait uh this pull request so we can't we cannot merge this one until this one will be merged and what it will give us that in parallel we can do easily code review 
Uh, and uh, for example, in this pull request, we have some comments, and etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and we are fixing them while we waiting that it is merged. And then, uh, when this pull request is merged, uh, so then basically we can do this: we uh, change target branch to master. So, and uh, usually there won't be any like really hard conflicts, and you will just uh, continue work with it. Yeah, it what I would like to suggest. Or maybe, um, not really, uh, because again, as I told Anton, that uh, in first case you will have a uh, situation that in this uh, PR you will see changes from this branch, but in the another case you won't uh, see them. So uh, it's uh, really, uh, you can just try. So you uh, be skeptic, not believe me, just try. And you will see that it's much better because when you have the situation that you, when your engineers create because I saw such uh, pull requests, which includes more than 100 files, and each of it, each of it. So to review it, it's uh, and where it's so much uh, business logic to review it, it's really hard. Okay, so let's speed up a little bit. Uh, next uh, tip, which I would like to say about it's visualize complex solution again it's about from rubric uh, uh, thanks cap <laughs> because for some of you maybe it's obvious but for some of, uh, of you maybe not so what i would recommend it's when you create it's a, a tip for uh, people uh, for engineers who create pull requests when you create pull requests with uh, with really uh, hard uh, solutions uh, especially from business perspective i would recommend recommend not to be lazy and create simple diagram. Believe me, you cannot. That simple diagram will much and much help with to make code review easier for other engineers who review your pull request. And for this, I would recommend on Udemy, there is a course which called Modern React with Redux from uh, Stephen Greeder. And uh, I would recommend, even if you're from Java world and not related to front end, I would recommend to watch this course, uh, to, to watch this course uh, not for tips like uh, how to develop front end using React, but I would recommend to see how Stephen Greeder visualize his complex solutions. So just, just take a look how, how he did it, because it's really cool. And I understand that, uh, and I uh, completely agree that when you uh, draw just, and I had such situation again, I, I, I did this mistake because I created uh, from the architecture perspective, hard on for understanding pull request and uh, I was trying to merge it during two months, uh, believe me or not. And uh, really what helped me is to create simple diagram. When, when I created it, so uh, other uh, engineers who reviewed my pull request understand it from whole uh, aspects. And then it, it was much clearer. And before showing next tip, uh, I would like to uh, and to suggest to take a look at the next image. Could you please read the text from this screenshot? Uh, yeah, and could you please uh, uh, write in the Slack, uh, in the Zoom, in chat, uh, plus uh, or minus if you uh, faced during code review with, with such cases? Uh, yeah, and uh, interesting, yes, it's how our brain works. That is why my next tip is uh, do reverse code review. I am not sure that you heard about it, but it's really cool. So uh, again, let's come back to this example of code. So what I would recommend uh, and what uh, engineers usually do, they like check from top to bottom and from left to right. And uh, it's not really good, uh, you, especially when you are a reviewer and you check pull request. Why? Because sometimes, um, especially when you trying to, when you do self-review, because it's again, one of the best practices 
practice before uh, and it's like to be i would say even a programmer gentleman before uh, create pull request it's uh, better to do uh, just self review and when you do self review for your own code which you uh, have been looking like for more than one week or two week you already like it's so the same for you and after some time you won't see uh, just a simple mistakes and usually uh, yes we have linters etc but usually uh, they are not working properly or etc especially for projects with maintenance uh, legacy code etc so uh, my tip number seven it's uh, try and what i uh, like uh, was uh, done what was done what i did uh, when i when i did co code review it's uh, to check code from the bottom to top and from the right to left and it's my like i would say even hack because i remember a case when i noticed uh, using this approach like for example uh, there was word like capital when uh, first c was not uh, from the english alphabet but from the russian alphabet <laughs> yeah and uh, to notice it you really it's like it's really hard for noticing and i did it using this approach okay we have some comments <laughs> uh, regarding uh, cases when team does not do code review at all uh, i think it's better to do <laughs> another talk <laughs> yeah but uh, again it depends uh, i understand uh, sometimes it's really hard. Yeah, uh, thanks, Maxim, for your uh, comment. I agree because uh, I had um, a lot of discussion with stakeholder regarding importance of code review because it's hard to sell. Sometimes it's hard to sell stakeholder uh, ideas that why code review is important and why we should uh, take into account uh, tech depth, etc. Yeah. So let's go further. Next tip will it's learn version control features. And uh, could you please type in uh, in the Zoom again in chat plus if you aware about most of your features of your version control. It could be Bitbucket or GitHub or GitLab or whatever. So could you please write plus if you like uh, already do it and you know uh, like a lot of features no no one interesting uh okay uh, so regarding what i mean by features for example uh yeah uh, my demo would be more cool if uh, I could have access to Bitbucket. Uh, I don't have right now, but I can show you on uh, GitHub, for example. Uh, so, uh, from again, from my experience, that uh, what I understand uh, that, um, for example, uh, for example, you see pull request and you uh, watch it uh, in this view, and you did it. Uh, for or have been doing for last two or three years and you even uh, didn't try to do like this uh, to change a diff view to this approach and maybe it will be more uh, or in opposite way and maybe this view will be more uh, convenient for you or suitable or for example i'm not a, i'm not sure that it, we have this feature in github but in bitbucket for example again there is a feature to uh, write a task uh, so when you uh, want to provide a comment uh, in yeah i don't see it here or add task list Ah, uh, it's probably not this. Yeah, and in Bitbucket, for example, there is a feature really cool when you can create a task. So there is no need to write a comment. You just create a simple task and it gives you a possibility that until this task will be done, you uh, are not able to merge this pull request. So what I'm trying to say by this tip, and probably it's obvious for you, for most of you, but for some of you, maybe not. So what I'm trying to say, it's, 
uh, spend one weekend or maybe some time uh, just to learn uh, main features of your version control system. And, and believe me that because Again, from my personal experience, when I uh, did uh, like this, uh, not on the talk level, but on uh, as knowledge sharing level to my teammates, so not all of them was uh, were aware about these features. Cherry uh, pick, Bitbucket is free, so. Um, Bitbucket is free, but uh, uh, I'm working right now in Atlassian unit and right now we have case that we uh, do not have access. So uh, because there are mo most uh, repositories and it would be more cooler to, to show it uh, you there. Uh, also, you can commit new minor changes. Uh, yes, and request changes blocks version. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. So tip number eight is just learn features of your version control. Uh, next tip is uh, just follow positive code review culture. And for this, I would like again to tell you a story because uh, it was before software. I was working on some project and uh, we had like, uh, as usually usual situation, we have engineers from the customer side. And there was one engineer is, uh, if I remember correctly, his name was Martin. And what he usually did, he like uh, open pull request Request, uh, mark it as needs work, and that's it. And you like, uh, what? <laughs> uh, you open your pull request, and there, there you see just needs work, what work, uh, like how to understand what to improve, and and that's it. So, and it it's to be honest, it's not uh, really okay. And I believe maybe uh, some of you faced with such uh, cases. Also, it's like when you do this. Uh, uh, when you write uh, like such comments, maybe some of you even <laughs> using these comments, and maybe some of you saw such comments. Uh, again, it's not really good way to say in uh, what you're trying to say. So uh, again, I would recommend to try to follow. Uh, and again, it's about arguing. It's about uh, even complaints or even rough words, because uh, uh, on, so on, the, on one of my projects, we even had some situation when teammate from Ukraine uh, written not really well uh, cultural and positive provided comment and we received feedback from the stakeholder that we uh, need to improve uh, communication uh, regarding code review and after that we had if I remember correctly two or three weeks training uh, <laughs> for the communication, how to communicate properly and positively uh, during code review. Because when you are uh, like in a nutshell complaining, it's not really, it's not uh, like making it uh, better or more simple to make it done. Okay. And the uh, last tip is make process clear and clean. And uh, here I would like to go a little bit deeper. What do I mean by uh, process make clear and clean? Uh, so it's really simple. It's and really obvious, like pro just provide clear subject and description. And some of you maybe even saw pull request when you like has subject like just because or clean up clean up of what uh, so because uh, after like months or two or maybe more it will be hard to understand what's the idea behind uh, such case so i would recommend to just provide a, a simple subject and description also it's attached demo uh, of your solution and sometimes it could be uh, like when you attach demo in pull request but do not do it uh, in the ticket so i would recommend to do it better uh, in the ticket not in the pull request also do not forget uh, to change attached demo because uh, usually it could be cases when you do refactoring uh, uh, but you forget to, to change your attached demo and you like shipped uh, one solution and uh, in the attached demo is another solution. Uh, and uh, again, do not forget please about tests, about failing builds uh, to use work in progress. Uh, when you, uh, again, it's about uh, best practices because while you are working with 
pull request, make it market as VIP so other engineers understand that there is no need to uh, review such pull request right now. And use optional. Optional, it's like when you write a command, uh, add optional, that it's like not required to do. Uh, it's just you want to provide or highlight or share your opinion, but it's not required to do. So that's it basically. And uh, a couple of lessons learned to add because I see that uh, we need uh, to finish. Uh, yeah, it's uh, please find time uh, for review. Schedule uh, on a daily basis, like one hour or maybe two hours uh, to make a good review. Because again, what I learned then when there is no uh, in my schedule time uh, for code review, there won't be any time for code review uh, and it's uh, not really good and what i practiced at uh, as uh, at the technical lead i just uh, scheduled a time for code review for the whole team where we can all come to this uh, meeting and do it uh, all together and sometimes it was really funny because uh, you can complain etc so it's really cool it's engaging. Another lesson learned is decompose your work. It's really help you uh, to make your code review better. And uh, again, from my experience, for some engineers it's obvious and for some it's not. Uh, another lesson learned is give feedback that helps. So it's like when you trying to argue or uh, trying to say that it's bad bad case or bad solution, we need to do something with it. I would say it's not fair to write such comments if you do not suggest anything. So please give feedback uh, that helps, uh, not just give feedback. Another one, it's really was new for me. I learned it uh, uh, in our atlasian unit because before that I even didn't uh, think that it it could be uh, not it could be but it's uh, okay to uh, to do it's a uh, um, add designer to reviewing pull requests uh, why because uh, sometimes uh, during code review during refactoring could be cases which affect some design and it would be great to uh, invite designer to saw those change, those changes during code review not after it was the ship to production but during code review and believe me, you will avoid a lot of problems uh, which relates to design. And uh, the last one, uh, lesson learned, it's just learn best practices. Just learn, because uh, what, what I understand is that not much engineers uh, just Google, for example, uh, best practices for code review. They usually just, they learn uh, how to write code, but they do not learn how to uh, work with code review. They just don't like, watch like don't search it in the internet so the my ne last lesson learned would be just uh, learn best practice and now you think like now what and what next and uh, um, i would say just one word practice that without practice it's useless believe me or not you uh, it might be that uh, all suggestions we, or all best practice and lesson learned, which I shared with you today, you already know, but uh, knowing it uh, does not make it useful. If you want to make it useful, you need practice. Without practice, uh, you won't achieve it. And let's uh, make a quick summary regarding what we discussed today. It's uh, wor uh, work with board from right to left, clarify requirements, use critical thinking, follow ticket description, use feature branches as target, uh, visualize complex solutions, do reverse code review, learn version control feature, follow positive code review culture, and make process clear and clean. And uh, some lessons learned. It's scheduled time for review, decompose your work, give feedback that helps, ask designer to review your PRs, and just learn best practice. And I want to end uh, my talk with uh, this uh, cool quote from Henry Ford that quality means doing it right when no one is looking. So that's it. Uh, I hope that it was useful and interesting. And uh, right now is Q&A session. So please feel free to ask any question if you have. Thank you for your session. I have one question uh, regarding marriage conflicts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
for example, uh, when you uh, not updated your actually PR for a long time, and you must uh, do a lot of you know, changes, uh, fix a lot of co um, commands to your mm -hmm. PR, and uh, later you must also pull changes from development branch or master uh, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Is there any best practice how to solve it or any um, any flow in in the best way? Uh, and could, let's paraphrase it a little bit. So, what what the problem you are trying to uh, solve or to avoid? Because uh, uh, how to avoid a lot of merge conflicts? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, it depends. <laughs> uh, to be honest, it's not easy question to ask uh, to answer because it depends from the case. Because it, it depends from the team. For example, I had experience when we uh, worked with one uh, repository. Uh, our team was more than one hundred engineers, and we had uh, uh, so uh, during uh, one simple day we had like uh, close to one hundred pull requests. So at, it was really hard to, to manage. So I would say it depends from the case. We can discuss it more uh, in more detail, uh, Andrei. Could you please write me this question in Teams? Uh, we can um, uh, schedule a sync and discuss it if you are interested. Uh, but right now, what I just want to say is that um, it depends from the team. In the, it depends from the how how often you do uh, just pull, just a regular pull. Because uh, often engineers have such problems when they do a simple pull, not really often, like uh, once in a week or once in a month. Uh, why? Because uh, if you work with develop, for example, develop branch, uh, it's develop branch. So it's uh, uh, it's uh, obvious that it's not stable. And usually when you work with your feature, you just pull new changes from develop and you the build or builds are broken. Uh, uh, every time and at some moment you like oh, okay yeah i won't just do it i will do it only when before i will, will create pull request so and the last one it depends uh, what strat what merging strategy you are using it's uh, rebase or uh, merge because uh, with uh, rebasing, it will be harder. Uh, your uh, history of commits will be cleaner, but it will be harder to merge conflicts. Uh, again, uh, I learned it on, on my own mistakes because on some projects where I worked, we used to rebase strategy, and it was really hard to like uh, every time, especially when you didn't pull uh, for, for example, two months, and you need to rebase more than 100 commits. So it's a really mess. So my suggestion would be just to try uh, make pull as much as you could, and also it's uh, try to uh, not to. Uh, it relates to uh, one of the tips which I which I told. Follow description. So do not overplay with uh, Boy Scout principle because when you trying to go. Uh, like more uh, uh, and trying to fix other stuff. Uh, there is no, uh, how, I forgot how it like, uh, there is no perfection. So you can't do it uh, like re really great. So you will be improving it, improving it, improving it. And it's like uh, uh, every time will be. Uh, I hope I answered the question, Andrei. Yes, sure. Thank you. Uh, yes. Yeah. And let me read other questions. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, good. Uh, yeah. Who, want, who wanted to unmute? Because maybe. Uh, yeah. I, uh, hello, Alexander. I wanted to ask one question. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, yeah. Thanks for your uh, presentation and demo. And uh, I wanted to ask what can you suggest in the situation when we uh, have some conflicts uh, during the code review. For example, we have uh, all us, we have different experience. And for example, we have two senior developers, right? They both uh, provided co code review in some changes from junior developer. And uh, 
uh, they have different opinion. Uh, how, what can you suggest in this situation? And uh, what? It's did a good have, question. Did yeah. you have experience? <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Thanks for asking. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and I believe maybe you mostly uh, also faced with such cases. What I would suggest it um, depends again from the a couple of factors. First one, it's uh, for example we have two seniors, and uh, each each of uh, them has some uh, opinion which is uh, like not really working together. Uh, it depends uh, one of the senior who is most uh, like uh, key developer in the team or knowledge holder or more expert in this code. Uh, it, it depends from this case. And what I would recommend, what I usually do, it's find someone else. So what I would recommend it find someone else senior or expert who can provide another uh, point of view and then you will understand like aha uh -huh, okay we have this opinion this and this another and then it will be two to one for example and then you will uh, come up with some idea how to do with it uh, and it's okay uh, uh, like folks remember that it's okay to just go to another project uh, to another technical lead another architecture and I did it a lot uh, when you don't when you can't uh, agree among your teammates yeah mm -hmm. okay also as you already recommended you can ask designer I suppose uh, yeah it, it depends uh, from the question uh, on which you can't agree if this uh, relates to UI definitely if it's only technical aspects that uh, then I would recommend to use someone else uh, okay let me uh, answer a couple of more questions I saw somewhere a question regarding how to react to comment with just question mark <laughs> again it it depends uh, on your uh, uh, like uh, emotional intelligence i would recommend uh, just like to re ask uh, like please could you please what, what do you mean by this and uh, yes it's better to uh, because it could be from uh, it could be some background in this uh, que question mark. Yes, yeah? so I, I would just, uh, what I would do, I would just react like, could you please provide more details? What do you mean by this? What, uh, be, because uh, again, we are human beings and he uh, or she could, has, uh, could have another opinion on what is not clear. Because sometimes the, like it could be name of the function or uh, structure. So it's not re really clear. So I would just recommend to ask for more details. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can always uh, answer with three question marks. Uh, the root cause also could be bad cause splitting. Okay, some some comments. And uh, as I can see, there is no much question. So thanks for your time. It was a pleasure to share with you uh, my uh, code review, not my, I uh, like code, code review best practices, uh, best practice from my experience. Here you can see my email in SoftSor. So feel free to ask me any questions regarding code review or others. Uh, I will try to answer on them.